hi and hello and thank you so much for tuning in and if you are new welcome to my channel my name is Preeti Rao and I am both a real estate and a mortgage broker for close to 20 years now most of you know by now that there have been some significant changes made to the real estate guidelines that we have been following all this time and there is a lot of confusion about it and to make matters worse many Canadians are also mixing up those changes to the recent law suit that took place in Missouri against the National Association of Realtors. This is completely separate to the changes happening within the Canadian real estate industry. And in the next few videos, I'm going to explain the rules that have changed and hopefully clear some of the confusion on what's happening out there. But in today's video, I am just going to touch on the lawsuit and why it is actually really bad for sellers. But before I start, please be a sweetheart, make it worth my while, hit that like, share, subscribe button and that bell icon. It gets me motivated to keep you up to date with everything real estate. So today, let's talk about what really happened in the US. Now, according to Mike Ketchmark, the plaintiff's lawyer, NAR and its members have illegally conspired for decades to fix commission rates on home sales. And all these intelligent people could not understand why the buyer agents should get 50% of the said commission. I mean, what do buyer agents do actually? Let me tell you, the knowledgeable and the unscrupulous buyer agents work with buyers sometimes over six months to a year to prep them and get them ready to buy your home at a price that you, the seller, want. The good and the caring buying agents do put in a lot of TLC into their buyers to then listen to an ungrateful lawyer and a seller turn around and say, I don't know who they are. I never met them. They did absolutely nothing for me. These were the words of Gerard Bright. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. One of the plaintiffs. Anyways, long story short, NAR lost and the settlement was made of $1.8 billion. But do you know how the money was divided? Each plaintiff got $2,500. Yes, $2,500 only. But guess who came out the winner in all of this? Mike Ketchmark and his team, the plaintiff's lawyer, whose fee was set between 33 to 40% of the settlement, and he walked away with over $600 million. I'm going to give you some time for these numbers to actually sink in. This man has set a fee of 40%, the same rule he is fighting against. He walks away with $600 million, and those poor plaintiffs only get $2,500 each. So who truly won this case? Now, I want all you sellers out there to stop and think for a minute. Yes, you want to sell your home. Yes, you want top dollars for your home. And yes, you want it sold fast. You want less hassle. You want to keep as much of the equity as you can. You want, you want, you want. Nothing wrong with any of that. But why is it that when you are selling, you forget the time when you were the buyer? How can you forget how you had to save up for the down payment? How you had to save up for the closing costs? The stress of getting that mortgage? Yes, you can today turn around and tell me, that's not my problem. But when you were the buyer, if your seller thought the same way, now, if the rule does come out in the US, I mean, it's not out yet, they're appealing it. So there's no rule right now set that the buyers have to pay their own agents. But if the rule does come out that the buyer is responsible for the cooperating commission, that means they have to fork out 2% or 2.5% out of their own pocket, which they may not be able to. Today, the money comes out of the equity. And even though technically it's going out of the seller's pocket, Think about it for a minute. The buyer also has paid towards that commission. The only advantage that the buyer has today is that the amount is now part of the purchase price and will be counted in the mortgage. Whereas if the buyer has to pay for the commissions themselves, it won't be counted as part of the mortgage and the buyers may not be able to buy. So let me paint you a picture so you can see the series of events. Your home is on the market. 
your agent is trying to find buyers for you. Now with the new Tressa rules, he cannot represent both parties. So the buyer needs their own agent who they will have to pay for themselves. They may not have all the funds. So where there could potentially be four or five buyers fighting for your home, now there may be only one and they will have all the negotiating power. And God forbid, if there are 10 homes for sale on the street, how long do you think your home will stay on the market? Food for thought, right? So I'm going to leave you with this. And next week, I'm going to dive into the changes within the Canadian market and how they're actually preparing us for what's to come. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call me. If you still don't know who I am, go check my rating on Google and read my client reviews. Till then, take care. And if you found value or like this video and would like to see more content, click on the boxes on the screen. Once again, my name is Preeti Rao. My contact information is in the description box below. Make sure to hit like, share, subscribe and the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to call me because I hold the key that opens the door to your dream home.